Today we're going to talk about symmetry and even and odd functions. So types of symmetry. We have line symmetry and point symmetry. If the graph can be folded along a line such that two halves match, then it's line symmetry. So for example, for this first graph, we can see that if we were to fold the graph in half on the x-axis, it would match up on the other side. So this has x-axis symmetry. And for this one here, if you fold the graph along the y-axis, then it matches up on the other side. So that would be y-axis symmetry. So this, of course, is x-axis and y-axis. Point symmetry. The graph remains unchanged when rotated 180 degrees about a point. So notice we have the point x, y in the graph. And if we go 180 degrees rotation around the origin, um, we would get negative x, negative y. So this would be called origin symmetry. So the x-axis and y-axis are common lines of symmetry. The origin is a common point of symmetry. So we have different tests that we use for symmetry. The following graphical and algebraic tests can be used to determine if the graph of a relation is symmetric to the x-axis, y-axis, and or the origin. So for x-axis, for every point x, y on the graph, the point x, negative y is on the graph. Because remember, again, if you look at this graph up here, when you have x-axis symmetry, notice that your x values stay the same. You're just changing your y values to be the negative. So replacing y with negative y results in the equivalent equation would be the algebraic test. For y-axis symmetry, if we have the point x, y in the graph, then the point negative x, y would be on the graph. And again, that's because if you look at our y-axis symmetry up at the top there, um, here, example, we, if we have the point, let's call this x comma y, then we would have to have this point over here, which is negative x comma y. And again, same thing for the x-axis symmetry, except for this was x comma y, and then this point, notice it changes just the y-coordinate. So replacing x with negative x, if it results in equivalent equation, that was to be the algebraic test. And then for origin symmetry for the point x, y in the graph, then you also have to plot the point negative x, negative y on the graph. So replacing x with negative x and y with negative y, if it results in an equivalent equation, then you have your origin symmetry, and that, again, is the algebraic test. So next it says, use the graph to determine if the relation is symmetrical to the x-axis, y-axis, and or origin. So looking at our graph for this first one here, um, if we look at x-axis, that would be like folding the graph in half here. So it doesn't look like we have x-axis symmetry. It wouldn't give us the same graph back. If we fold the graph in half on the y-axis here, it looks like we would get the same thing back. So we could say we have y-axis symmetry. And for origin symmetry, let's say we have this point right here. So this is um, the point 2, comma 0. So that means we should have the point negative 2, 0, negative 0, which we do. So OK, that one worked. Um, so keep going for the next one. So let's say we, we did this point right here. It looks kind of like it's at 1, negative 3. So that means we should have the point negative 1 and positive 3. So negative 1, positive 1, 2, 3 would be up here. So notice that does not work, so we don't have origin symmetry. And so that means the y-axis symmetry is the only one that we have. Looking at number 2 for the graph, um, so for this one, if we look at x-axis symmetry, if we fold our graph in half here, that would not work because our graph would have to be going this way um, and this way, which it's not. So we don't have x-axis symmetry. So then if we look at y-axis symmetry, it would be the same thing. So x-axis doesn't work, y-axis doesn't work. If we try origin symmetry, if we have the point, looks like right here at 1, 2, 3, 2, then that means we should have the point negative 3, negative 2, which we do. So this has origin symmetry. So looking at the next graphs, you should pause the video and try to do these next ones on your own when you're undone. You can unpause. You can then check your work. So looking at x-axis symmetry, so if we fold the graph in half on the x-axis here, does the other side match up? Yes, it does. And you can see we have the point right here. It looks like negative 1, 2, 3. So negative 3 and 1, 2, 3, 4. That means we should have the point negative 3 and negative 4, which is right here. So that means, again, we have x-axis symmetry. For y-axis symmetry, it 
if we fold our graph in half on the y-axis, which is right here, notice that it's not going to give us the same graph back, so that one doesn't work, and origin symmetry, symmetry doesn't work, so just x-axis symmetry is the only one here. Looking at the next graph, we have x-axis symmetry, so that one works. Um, so if we do y-axis symmetry, the graph would also match up on the other side if we fold it in half. And then for origin symmetry, let's pick points. We have two, uh, oh, no, sorry, let's do one, two, three, one, two, three. It looks like we have the, um, the point three, three. So if we have the point negative three, negative three, which would be right here, that gives us origin symmetry. So this one has all three symmetries. So x-axis, y-axis, and origin symmetry. Question number five for this graph um, if we try x-axis symmetry, the graph doesn't match up. Y-axis symmetry, the graph also doesn't match up. So let's go ahead and try origin symmetry. So if I try origin symmetry and pick a point, um, it looks like we have the point 1, 2, so 2, comma 1. So we should have the point negative 2, negative 1, which is not on our graph. So that means this one doesn't have any symmetry. And the last graph looks like we have no x-axis, but we do have y-axis, and again, we wouldn't have origin, so that would be it for that one. So that's graphically looking at symmetry. Now let's algebraically show the graph as, and it tells us what type of symmetry here. So for the first one, it says algebraically show the graph has y-axis symmetry. So remember, if you are thinking about y-axis symmetry, if you have the point x, y on your graph, then for y-axis symmetry, if you have negative x, y, then it, it, that's the algebraic test. You're taking out the x and replacing it with negative x, and if you get the same equation back, then it has y-axis symmetry. So in this case, we get y equals negative x to the fourth minus 5 times negative x squared plus 3. Remember, anytime you are plugging in a negative to something and you're taking it to an even power, that means that becomes positive because a negative to even power always stays positive. So then that means you can just go ahead and get rid of those negatives there. So this means y equals x to the fourth minus 5x squared plus 3 gives you the same thing back. So since this is the same equation, that means this has y-axis symmetry. And sometimes in math you'll see these three dots. These three dots just mean therefore or in conclusion. Um, we have y-axis symmetry. So it checks out. Um, if for some reason on this last problem, like let's say we had an x here. If there would have been an x in the equation, our original equation right here, and we plug a negative x in for that, if that would have happened, then notice then you would have had a change of sign here, and this would have become negative 3x. And notice that's not the same equation back. So if that would have been the case, then this would not have y-axis symmetry. But again, um, because there are even powers and a negative to an even power stays positive and it gives you the same thing back, that's why we have y-axis symmetry. So I just wanted to show you that. So the next one we're taking a look at is x-axis symmetry. So this one, if you have the point x, y in your graph, remember folding in half on the x-axis means you're changing the y-coordinate. So you would get x negative y. So we're going to take out that y and replace it with negative and keep the rest of it same because we only have one y in the equation. So notice this is a negative to an even power. So again, that stays positive. And again, it gave us the same equation. So thus, this does have x-axis symmetry. And that's how you show that it has a symmetry by taking out the y's and replacing it with negative y. Now, same thing with the last one. Let's say we had a y to an odd power. So let's say we had like y cubed here. If you were to replace y cubed with a negative, you get negative y cubed. That would then become negative y cubed. And it changes your sign of your equation. It doesn't give you the same thing back if we had that. That would not give you x-axis symmetry because of the odd power. So just, again, something to think about. Going to the last one, we have origin symmetry. So for origin symmetry, remember if you have the point x, y, you need to replace both x and y with negative. And if you get the same thing back, then that means you have origin symmetry. 
So here we have negative y equals negative x cubed over 10 minus negative x. So negative y, um, this is to the first power, so it stays negative. Negative to an odd power stays negative. And then negative times a negative is positive. So then we're not finished. This is not the same equation, but we're not done because notice the original equation is just y equals not negative y. So that means we need to divide each term by negative 1. Or you can multiply each term by negative 1. doesn't matter. So when you do that, you get y equals negative divided by negative is positive. So x over 10. And this will become minus x. So notice that is the same as the original equation. So thus, this does have origin symmetry. So those are the algebraic tests to show whether or not your graph has symmetry by, again, either replacing x with a negative x, y with a negative y, or both x and y with negative. If you get the same equation back, then you know it has that type of symmetry that you're looking for. So go ahead and take a moment to pause the video and determine the types of symmetry. When you're done, you can unpause and check your work. So for this first one, it says determine the types of symmetry. So if I look at my symmetry, and I, you can use those um, rules that we had above. So again, for y-axis, x-axis, and origin symmetry, I'm going to be thinking about these. So I know for y-axis symmetry, if my x's, remember we talked about them being even powers, if they're even powers, we know we're going to get the same thing back. Therefore, I know by looking at this equation, this one is going to have y-axis symmetry. And if you wanted to do the algebraic test, you could. y equals negative 2 times negative x to the 8th plus 3 times negative x squared. And again, any time you have a negative to an even power, it stays positive. And this gives us the same equation. Therefore, this one has y-axis symmetry. If you were to graph this, you could also graphically look at it and see that it has y-axis symmetry. You could also use the table to help you determine it has y-axis symmetry. Looking at the second equation, notice that now my x is to an odd power. So if I plug in negative x in here, it wouldn't have y-axis symmetry, but our y is even. So if I plug in a negative y, then for this one, I would get the same equation back. And therefore, this, since it's the same equation, I know it's going to have x-axis symmetry. And again, you could also confirm this by plugging into your calculator and checking. And for the first two, we know that it doesn't have origin symmetry because, again, if you put in a negative here for x, it changes the equation. And if you put a negative in for y, it changes the equation. Because remember, origin symmetry, you have to do negative in both x and y. So looking at the third equation, I notice that my y is negative. So if I plug in negative y in there, I'm not going to have x-axis symmetry because it doesn't give me the same equation. And my x's are also odd powers. So if I plug in a negative for x, it changes my equation signs here. So it doesn't give me the same equation back. So I know this doesn't have y-axis or x-axis symmetry. So I want to try origin symmetry to see. So for origin, you replace both x and y with negative. So if we replace both x and y with negative, and this is very similar really to the last equation we just did for origin symmetry, just the, we have extra numbers here. So um, if I plug in the negative, you would notice that this gives me negative y equals, this is an odd power, so negative times negative would be positive, so this would be x cubed over 2, and this would change to minus 5x. But again, you're solving for y equals, so we want to divide everything by negative 1, or it's the same thing as multiplying by everything by negative 1. So when you do that, you get y equals negative x cubed over 2 plus 5x, because negative divided by negative is positive. So this does give you the same equation back. So this does have origin symmetry. And again, you could also confirm that by plugging into your y equals your calculator, looking at the graph, and looking at the table. The last one that we have, um, notice that you have an x here that's to an even power, but this one's to an odd power. So if we plug in negative x, we're not going to get the same thing out. Um, instead of being y equals, it's f of x. But remember, that just means y equals, so if it helps you to write y equals there um, to see the next one that's 
prime. So if I plug a negative in for y, it would change all the signs of my equation. So I know this um, doesn't have x-axis symmetry. And if we try origin symmetry and both do negative for y and x, we get negative y equals, this would stay as 2x squared because it's negative to an even power. This sign would change to negative 7x. Oops. And then this one just stays minus 9. And then if you divide everything by negative 1, or again multiply everything by negative 1 each term, you would get y equals negative 2x squared plus 7x and then plus 9. And notice this is not the same. So this doesn't have x-axis um, or y-axis or origin symmetry, so this is none. And again, you could also confirm that graphically. So next we want to look at then even and odd functions. So a function is even if it's symmetric with respect to the y-axis. So anytime you have y-axis symmetry, you have what's called an even function. And the algebraic test for an even function would be f of negative x if it's equal to f of x. And you get no sign changes when you plug a negative in for x into your equation. Kind of like what we just talked about up here. You got the same equation when you plug the negative in for x. Therefore, this equation right here would also be an even function. So I'm going to make a note of that up here. So this one, f of negative x equals f of x. So this is also called an even function. Um, a function is um, odd if it's symmetric with respect to the origin. So if it's origin symmetry, it's also an odd function. So the test for origin symmetry is f of negative x. If you plug um, negative in for x and you got all different signs out, because remember, the algebraic test for, or, or for origin symmetries is when um, you plug negative in for x and for y. So if you just plug a negative in for x and all the signs change, then that means you have origin symmetry. So like up here, if instead we did f of negative x into this equation, um, we would get negative negative x cubed over 2 plus 5 times negative x. So notice then that gives us negative and a negative would become positive, so x cubed over 2 and then minus 5x. So notice again, this says negative of the function, negative f of x. So if all the signs change in your equation, so this was minus, this was plus, and this becomes plus and this is minus, that means this is equal to negative of the function. So that's why this is also called an odd function. So then what about x-axis symmetry? Can you think of a way that this does not relate to even and odd functions? So again, let's think about our graph. Um, I'll just do a quick graph right here. So this graph right here, um, if I drew it better, would have x-axis symmetry. So for this x-axis symmetry, why does this not relate to even and odd functions? Think of the word function here. Um, this is not a function, right? This graph fails the vertical line test. So the graph fails the vertical line test and is not a function. So when we're talking about even and odd functions, that's why we don't include our x-axis symmetry for anything because it's not a function, in case you were curious. So the next example says to determine algebraically if the function is even, odd, or neither, if even or odd, describe the symmetry as well. So looking at our first equation, we're going to use these tests. If I plug in a negative for x, then I should get the same thing back if it's even or all signs changed if it's odd. So if I plug a negative in for x here, notice I get this is negative to an odd power, so it stays negative. And then same thing here, so this negative times negative becomes positive. 
So notice the signs have changed. This one was positive and this one was negative. So we had plus, minus, and now this became negative and this became positive. So all the signs changed. That means this is equal to negative f of x. So because f of x, negative x equals negative f of x, all signs change. This is an odd function. And remember that odd functions have also origin symmetry. Looking at the next one, we have negative x squared plus 6. So if we do f of negative x and plug it in for all of our x values, we have negative. So we get negative x squared plus 6 because there's no x there. A negative squared becomes positive, so this would stay negative x squared plus 6, which is the same equation, which means that this is equal to f of x, so f of negative x equals f of x. Therefore, this is an even function. And remember, even functions have y-axis symmetry. Looking at the next one, we have x cubed minus 1. So same thing, we're going to use our test, f of negative x. So if we plug in a negative x here, we get negative, so an odd power stays negative. So for this one, notice this is not the same equation because this is positive and this has negative x cubed. And it's not all signs changed because this did not change, so sign did not change. So that means that in this case, f of negative x does not equal f of x, and it does not equal negative f of x. That means this is neither even nor odd. So just because this is neither even nor odd, we can still check for um, x-axis symmetry if we wanted to. So remember, if you go back up here, x-axis symmetry is when you replace the y with negative, and if you get the same thing back, you have x-axis symmetry. So if we come back up here and we get y equals x cubed minus 1, if we put in the negative for y here, we would not get the same thing back because you would have negative y equals x cubed minus 1, so this then divide everything by negative, you get y equals negative x cubed plus 1, so that does not give us the same equation back, so it doesn't have x axis symmetry either. Um, looking at this next one, number 4, so again we're going to do our test. If I plug in a negative for x and get the same thing back, it's even, um, or sorry, yeah, even, and if it um, changes the signs, it would be odd, so here we have, oops, so here we have the square root of negative x squared minus 4, which gives us the square root of the negative to the even power stays positive. So this gives us the same thing back, f of x. So that means this is an even function. And you can use those three dots if you want to. So therefore, in conclusion, this is even. And even functions have y-axis symmetry. Looking at the next one, same thing. So if I plug in a negative for my x's, negative divided by negative becomes positive. And this is to an odd power, so it stays negative. So that's why. So notice that um, for this one, this is equal to the opposite sign. The signs did change, so negative f of x. Therefore, this is an odd function which means it has origin symmetry. And then looking at the next one that we have, um, so for this one, if we plug a negative in for x, we would get negative x plus 1. 
So this is not the same equation. We don't have all signs changed, and therefore this is neither even nor odd. And again, you could look at it graphically to tell. And if you think about this graph, I mean, just from all our transformations, and this is an absolute value function, and we're moving our absolute value function to the left one. So this is what the graph would look like. So it doesn't have x-axis symmetry, it doesn't have y-axis symmetry, nor does it have origin symmetry, so none. Um, so here's some rules that you can use to help you. If the rule for a function is a polynomial, so if it is a polynomial equations, which we talked about last year, remember polynomial equations um, have whole number exponents, so you can't have like x to the um, negative 2 because then that wouldn't be a polynomial. They don't have any radicals in the equations, um, and uh, so you, if you have a radical in the equation, it's not, so um, you don't have any absolute values in your equation. So if it's a polynomial in which other terms have an even degree, then the function is even. So a constant term has a degree 0, which is even. If the rule for a polynomial function in which the terms have odd degrees, then the function is odd. So that's another way you can easily kind of check to see whether or not a function is going to be even or odd just by looking at the degrees. But again, if it says to algebraically um, show the function is even or odd or neither, then you actually have to show the test. But looking really quickly, notice that this first one had all odd powers and it was an odd function. This one has all even powers because x to no power would be like x to the 0, which is we consider even. And then this one has... Um, x to the third, which is odd, but then if it's constant, remember we consider that even, so both, that's why it's neither. Number four is a square root function, number five is a rational function, and number six is absolute value, so you would definitely need to do the test on those. But if it's a polynomial function, like I said, um, in looking at number seven, you can look at the powers. So this is even, this is even, this is even, and if it's a constant, we consider that even. So these are all even powers. That means this is going to be an even function. So if you were to do f of negative x, you would get the original function out for this one. So, And again, this only works for polynomial functions. If it's not a polynomial, you cannot do this. So the next one we have even even, and this is to the first power if it's not written, so it's odd. So this one is going to be neither. Looking at the next one, looking at the powers, we have an odd power, and x to the first power is odd. So this is going to be an odd function. And remember, even functions have y-axis symmetry, odd functions have origin. And then the last one, again, is not a polynomial. It's a rational function. But remember, a rational function is a polynomial divided by a polynomial is the definition. Um, so if it's a polynomial divided by a polynomial, we can still kind of use the rules. So this would be even, 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 even. So this is going to be, should be an even function based upon that rule. So if we do h of negative x and we plug a negative in for the x and do our algebraic test, we would get e negative number to um, even power stays positive. So this, we get the same thing back, which means this is an even function. So you can kind of still, even though it's a rational function, it's not a polynomial, but it is polynomial divided by polynomial, you can still, kind of still use those same rules. I just want to point that out. The next one, say, use the table to determine if the graph is even, odd, or neither. Um, so you want to think about your symmetries to kind of help you with this. Remember, even functions have y-axis symmetry, and odd functions have origin. So um, for this one, if we think about our y-axis symmetry, we would have to have a negative x and get the same y value out. Um, so if we look here, we have negative 4 gives us negative 12. 
And then here we have 4 and positive 12. So this one is kind of like saying we have negative x, negative y, and then this one would be x, y. So then looking at the next point here, we have negative 5, negative 25, and this is then positive. So it's the same thing. This is negative x, negative y, and this one became x, y. And then the last one here, negative, negative, and then it becomes positive. So that means that this is then an odd function, which has origin symmetry. Because remember, we said for origin symmetry, if you have x, y in your graph, and if you have the point negative x, negative y, um, and if you were to do the test, if you have the equation, f of x would then be equal to negative f of x. So again, this would be odd or origin symmetry. Looking at the next table that we have um, for this one, we have negative 3, negative 11, negative 2, 3, 1, 5. So down here we have positive 3, negative 11. So this is negative x, negative y. Down here we have x and negative y. So the only thing that changed was the um, x coordinate to get the same y coordinate. So here we have negative 2. So negative x and positive y. And down here we have um, the sign change. This is x and y. So again, looks like we only changed the x coordinate. And for this last one, we have again negative x, y. And then this one is um, x and y. So notice that just the x coordinates are changing here. So we're saying that we have the point x comma y. We're doing negative x and keeping the y values the same. So this means it has um, y-axis symmetry, which means it's an even function. Um, so f of negative x equals f of x. Another way you can look at that too is you could um, plug this into your calculator stat plot if it helps you. So if you go to your stat, enter on edit, and enter the values. If you have anything in there, you can clear the list by hitting clear and down, or you can actually just hit delete on the number like this. So that's stat, enter on edit, and we're going to enter those values. Negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 1, 2, and 3. Into list 1 and list 2 will be the y values. And once you have those in there, I'm going to turn my stat plot on, second y equals. I'm going to turn this on. We're in list 1 and list 2. And then if you hit zoom and you go all the way down to number 9, it says zoom stat. It gives you a nice window to look at for your stat plot. And then you can graphically see that this has... Um, y-axis symmetry because this points here, this points here, 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 and here. So that can also help you determine if this is y-axis symmetry, which is then an even function. And that is all for our lesson today.